Hey everybody, Ms. Dupree here. In this lesson, we are going to look at two types of changes, physical and chemical. We're going to learn the difference between physical and chemical changes and also look at examples of each type of change. We will learn how to be change detectives by looking at the clues that tell you you might have a chemical change. First off, let's look at the biggest difference between a physical and a chemical change. A physical change is any change that does not make a new substance. A chemical change is any change that causes one substance to turn into a completely new substance. So let's look at physical changes. Remember, physical changes do not make a new substance. For example, if I tear a piece of paper, I have changed its size. Or, if I crumple it into a ball, I have changed its shape. But, I still have paper. I have not made anything new. Size changes and shape changes are examples of physical changes. Nothing new is formed. A change to state of matter is another example of a physical change. If I take an ice cube and set it on the counter, it will melt and become liquid but I still have H2O. It's still water. If I take the same water and boil it, it will change from a liquid to a gas. But it's still H2O. It's still water. I have not made anything new. A change of state is another example of a physical change because nothing new is formed. Here's one more example. If I stir salt into water, the salt will dissolve and seem to disappear. But I haven't made anything new. I still have water and I still have salt. I have created a mixture, actually a solution, but I have not created a new substance. Mixtures and solutions are examples of physical changes. Physical changes are usually easy to reverse or change back. I can take my liquid water and freeze it to change it back into ice. Or I can uncrumple my piece of paper and make it flat again. Or I can evaporate my water and the salt crystals will be left behind. If you can easily undo the change, it's probably a physical change. Chemical changes are different. In a chemical change, an entirely new substance is created. For example, let's take our paper again. If I burn the paper, it will turn into ash. Ash is a completely different substance than paper. So this is a chemical change. It changed from paper into ashes. Chemical changes form a new substance. Cooking or burning something will always be an example of a chemical change. Here's another example. If I take baking soda, a solid, and mix it with vinegar, a liquid, strange things will happen. It will start bubbling, foaming, and fizzing. This is because the baking soda and vinegar are creating a chemical change and creating a gas. In fact, the gas that is created is carbon dioxide. There was no gas there before, so we have actually created something new. A chemical change always makes a new substance. Chemical changes are very difficult or impossible to reverse or undo. I can't take that ash and change it back into paper, can I? I also can't take that carbon dioxide gas and change it back into vinegar and baking soda. Once a new substance has been created, it can't be changed back into the original substance. Sometimes it's hard to see the changes that are happening during a chemical change. That's because the change is happening as the atoms and molecules are being rearranged to form new compounds, which make new substances. You can't see that happening because atoms and molecules are too small to see. 
but you can be a detective and look for clues that you have a possible chemical change. Here are the four clues that you need to know. The first clue is gas formation. If you mix two substances together and they start to bubble, fizz, or foam, that is a sign that a gas is being produced. Gas formation is one of the best clues that you have a chemical reaction. The second clue is an unexpected temperature change. If you put water in the freezer, well, of course it's going to get cold. That's a physical change. But when you mix sodium bicarbonate, calcium chloride, and water together, the mixture gets very, very cold. This is a sign that a chemical reaction is taking place. If your substance suddenly heats up or cools down without using heat or using the refrigerator, that's a chemical change. The third clue is an unexpected color change. Again, here's a physical change first. If I stirred Kool-Aid powder into water, well, of course it's going to change color. But we expect that to happen because the Kool-Aid powder was colored, right? But what if I mixed two clear liquids together and the mixture turned yellow? I wouldn't expect that to happen. That's a sign of a chemical change. Rusting metal, burned toast, and firecrackers are all examples of color changes caused by chemical reactions. The last one is a new one. It's called a precipitate. A precipitate is what you get when two liquids mix together and a solid is formed. You wouldn't expect that to happen, would you? When a solid forms when you mix two liquids together, that is a sign that a new substance is being created. That's a sign of a chemical change. Okay, let's review. A physical change does not create a new substance. Physical changes include changes in size, shape, or state of matter, such as solid to liquid to gas. Mixtures and solutions are also physical changes because nothing new is being created. Physical changes are usually easy to reverse or change back. Please pause the video now, write down these notes, and then start the video again when you're ready. Chemical changes do create completely new substances. Chemical changes include burning, rusting, fireworks, and anything that makes a new substance. You have to look for signs or clues of a chemical change. They include a gas being formed, an unexpected temperature change, either hot or cold, an unexpected or strange color change, or the formation of a precipitate, which is a solid that's created when you mix liquids together. Something new is always created out of a chemical change. Chemical changes are usually very difficult or impossible to reverse or change back. Please pause the video now, write down these notes, and make sure you understand everything in this video. If you have any questions, please ask your teacher. Good job, everybody.